I can't get this to look like influencer oatmeal. Hey, turn on the hidden levels and the grid. Okay, sorry about that. I have to film things by myself. So that's what I had to do. In recent years, Apple has integrated new features into the default iPhone camera app that allow you to take much better photos and videos. You just have to know where to look. So I haven't covered the best of these new features and all you need is an iPhone that can run iOS 14. There's one tip where you have to have an iPhone 12 Pro and if you don't, skip by it. But if you're curious, check it out anyways. Tip one, hidden camera levels. Ah, the elusive squared up top down shot seen so often in food photography. Note how straight the horizontal and vertical lines are. The iPhone now makes getting these types of photos easy by using its accelerometer. First, you need to enable the grid. Do this by going to settings, camera, and toggling on the grid. Then simply hold your phone straight down to trigger the crosshair to come up. Now when the crosshair is inside the yellow one, that's when you've got your shot. Tip number two, quick video capture. You know the dance. You want to quickly capture video, but you miss the moment because you're swiping over to the video setting. Now, there's a simple gesture that allows you to quickly take video and photos at the same time. When you're taking a video with your phone, hold on the shutter and you can start recording video. Drag upward or to the right, depending on your orientation. Tap the shutter button here to keep snapping photos during the video too. Tip number three, burst mode. Sometimes you don't want a video, but instead a rapid sequence of photos, AKA burst mode. Tap and hold the shutter, then quickly drag it toward the camera roll square. A counter will appear showing you the number of images taken in the burst. Want to use the volume up button to take burst shots? Go to settings, camera, and use volume up for burst. Tip number four, preserve creative controls. With preserved creative controls, if you change a setting, like a photo's aspect ratio, say from 16 by nine to a square image, then close the camera and reopen it, it won't revert back to the default. It will stay at what you set it. In this case, a square image. Go to settings, camera, preserve settings, then toggle on the slider for creative controls. Tip number five, reveal exposure control. In the past, dialing in exposure was a fussy experience, tapping and sliding every which way. Now you can control exposure and the mood of your photos a bit more easily. Open your camera, tap the caret at the top of the screen to reveal your controls drawer. Tap here to reveal the exposure control slider, drag it to the left and right to dial in the look you prefer. Tip number six, 24 frames per second video recording. Many films and popular TV shows are shown at 24 frames per second. Now you too can easily achieve the cinema standard for your home videos or random shots of people in a park. To set your videos to 24 frames per second, tap settings, camera, record video, then select your preferred resolution at 24 frames per second. You can easily change recording formats now too without going into your iPhone settings. Just tap in the top corner and select your frame rate and resolution of choice. Tip seven. The mirror selfie. Ah, the mirror selfie. When you're taking a selfie, you see your mirrored self in the viewfinder, and you become familiar with that person. But then the finished picture is this unmirrored other guy. I am not a fan of unmirrored Kenny. I kind of hate him, and he's not who I'm used to seeing. Mirrored Kenny, on the other hand, who I'm familiar with, I'm a fan. To get rid of your unmirrored self and turn this on, go to settings, camera, and under composition, toggle on mirror front camera. And finally, tip eight, Apple Pro Raw. This feature is currently only available on the iPhone 12 Pro models. If that's not you, feel free to skip ahead. Apple Pro Raw is a new setting that lets you shoot in raw and is available in iOS 14.3. It lets you get the absolute best photos out of your iPhone. It captures more information about the photo in a highly editable DNG file. Compared to default compressed images like JPEG or HEIF photos, which are around two to six megabytes each, a DNG can be upward of 25 megabytes. Because of that size, you'll want to use these sparingly for your most important moments. So why is it worth it? Raw images allow you to recover detail in shadows and highlights without the image breaking apart as much. Note here how much detail is lost in the shadows of the JPEG. 
compared to the RAW. You no longer need a special app to edit RAW photos and you can just use the Photos app like you would with any other photo. But I've been using the free app here, Snapseed, which is pretty great. Enable Apple Pro RAW by tapping Settings, Camera, Formats, then toggling on Apple Pro RAW. Now, when you open the camera, a RAW button will appear in the top corner. Tap that to enable Apple Pro RAW. Now go out and take some great Instagram photos. Use that iPhone camera to the best of its abilities because what else is there to do right now? Cloning myself in videos. Cloning myself. Mm, there's somebody right there. There's nobody there. I'm losing it.